let's take a look at the code for the draggable cat. We start off in the usual way, loading our libraries. Here we have our main function, which calls Big Bang. On tick, we call world after tick, and we'll have a tick every quarter of a second. Here we add a new line saying that on a mouse movement, Big Bang should call the function world after mouse event. Next we have our constants. Then we have our data definitions. A world has a cat and a paused huh field, which says whether or not the world is paused. Since the cat can be dragged, it will need an X position, a Y position, and also a selected huh field, which is a Boolean. That tells us whether or not the cat is selected for dragging. Let's make some cats. We'll define a little utility function for making sample worlds. Our initial world will have the cat at zero. The world, the cat will be unselected, and the world will be unpaused. Now we build some sample worlds for testing. We keep the same world names that we used before so we can reuse the tests from 3-1 Fallen Cat. Here's our help function, which determines whether or not a key event is a pause event. Now let's get to our functions. We have world after tick, which is world to world. All right. If the world is paused, then we return w unchanged. Otherwise, we create a new world with the updated value of the cat and the same paused. Wait, that's not right. This is not how we get at the paused field of W. But that's, this is a mistake that you might easily make if you were in a hurry. And I see I was in a hurry. Let's leave that there for the moment and see what happens when we try to run the program. So world after tick calls, calls cat after tick to find the new value of the cat. And here's cat after tick. OK. Oh, selected, huh, C. No, that's not right either. Well, again, let's leave that there and see what happens. OK. But if the cat is selected, we don't want the cat to move on a tick. If the cat is not selected, then we will have the cat fall by cat speed pixels, and its selected value will be unchanged. Here are our tests. Here's world to scene, which is unchanged from falling cat. What is changed is place cat image, since a cat now has both an X position and a Y position, place cat image, which knows about cats, will use though will use cat X position of C rather than a constant. And here we have our tests for world to scene. Okay. World after key event is again unchanged. The only thing that has changed is world with pause toggled, which now I take it back. 
The rules with pause toggle is also unchanged from, from falling cat. And there are the tests. Now we'll have our new material. Here is world after mouse event. World after mouse event returns a new world. The paused field is unchanged, but the value of the cat field will be computed by cat after mouse event. Notice our pattern here. Big Bang crawls world after whatever. And then world, which contains a cat, calls cat after whatever. Cat after mouse event does cases on the mouse event, depending on which mouse event we have here. We will call one of three help functions. If we have a mouse event that is not one of the three interesting mouse events, the three mouse events that our program responds to, then the cat is unchanged. We return the value of the cat without any changes. How many tests do we need here? Well, we have three mouse events. We have the cat selected or unselected, and we need to worry about whether the mouse event is inside the cat or not. So that's three times two times two, or 12 tests, plus we'll need a test to make sure we exercise that else line. And there are all the other tests. Okay, cat after button down says if the mouse event is in the cat, then we make we return a new cat that is just like the old cat, but one which is now selected. If the button down is not inside the cat, then the value of the cat is unchanged. Cat after drag says if the cat is selected, we will return a new cat centered on the mouse position. The new cat will still be selected. If the cat is unselected, then the value of the cat is unchanged. Cat after button up. Now, button up is going to unselect the cat, whether or not the cat, whether or not the button up is inside the cat. So we don't need the coordinates of the mouse event here. But it will return a new cat, just like the old cat, but this new one is definitely unselected. And last, we have in cat huh, which check to see, checks to see whether x and y are inside the bounding box of the cat. And the dimensions of the bounding box are given by half cat width and half cat height. OK. And that's all there is. So let's run this guy. Oh, paused, huh? This variable is not defined. Well, I predicted this was going to run into trouble here. So let's fix it. It's going to be if world paused, huh, of w. Right, we're going to use the observer world paused huh, or the selector world paused huh on W. And of course, we'll do the same thing here world paused of W. Let's get those parentheses balanced. And now we'll run again. Oh! Oh, same story for selected. We'll fix that. Right. If world selected, no, not world selected. C is a cat, so it's going to be cat selected, huh? Cat selected, huh? All right, we'll run it again. Whoa, two tests failed. 
let's see. The second failure was in cat with nearby point should return true. And it didn't. Okay, and we were at this test. Okay, so this looks like a problem with in cat. Let's read in cat. Okay, in cat huh, says, okay, let's take, we have the coordinate x, y. Let's see, let's compare x. So we're going to see whether x is within the x position of the cat minus half cat width or plus half cat width. That's good. Then we're going to say, let's take the cat y position, subtract half cat height to get the uh, y position of the upper end of the bounding box, and compare that to x. Why are we comparing a y position to x? Oh, this should be a y. Duh. Okay, let's try it again. And now all of our tests pass.